All right, so hiya, I'm Emily. Um, so my talk's gonna be on cognitive, the cognitive psychological biases that affect user testing. Uh, no. There we go. So yeah, I work for Hedgehog Lab, which is a um, digital consultancy agency that works out of Newcastle. And we specialize in apps, web design, and XR, so VR, and all of that good stuff. I specifically work in the user research, which has this lovely yellow funky color. And uh, we're a team of three currently that works on understanding users' needs and benefits of what the design needs to do to make sure and, uh, that they have the best experience possible. So before we start, I'm gonna be a bit self-indulgent and talk a bit about myself. So I studied psychology for four years. I'm not a mind reader, no matter how many hairdressers think I am. Um, and I got into doing UX research because I wasn't so much into psychology for the, the whole mind reading element. I wanted to know how I could help people and if that's helping people with understanding the design, then that's, that's the way I'm gonna do it. Um, and a lot of psychological principles play into design and understanding what you're doing. So I thought it was a perfect fit. So research within design is something that people sometimes are a bit hesitant of. Uh, people just think we like telling them what to do with their designs, which isn't what we wanna do at all. What we wanna do is ensure that users have the best experience possible when using their when using their products and using their designs basically so we talk to people we do user testing we ensure that everything is best for the user basically so coming back to what i'm actually going to talk about a lot of people think that user testing obviously is down to the researcher it doesn't matter but designers can do user usability testing uh, devs can do usability testing so it is important that people understand how to actually conduct user testing. Um, a lot of people don't know, or it seems simple, but it gets overlooked a lot, that there are biases that interplay with when you're doing um, usability testing. So I'm gonna go through five of the, more, of the most common ones that come across when you are doing usability testing. Okay. Some people are shocked that there are biases. I like that gif. <laughs> so number one, the framing effect. So this is to do with how you frame your questions. A lot of people will start off asking a question by saying, what's positive about this, this, this design, this button, this thing? You're already starting off your individual thinking, I've got to say something positive, I can't say anything negative. This is undermining what their actual thoughts and cognition may be. It's, it's something so simple and people wouldn't really think that this would be the case, but it can have a knock on effect on how someone would last in the rest of this testing session. So um, every one of these, I'm gonna hand off with a bit of advice of how to overcome this. For the framing effect, you'd use a more open question. So something similar to how do you feel about this product? Something that doesn't instinctively have this positive or negative connotation. So someone doesn't feel like they have to have this kind of opinion. The second one, the confirmation bias. This is our fault. This is the researcher. This is everyone who can try to conduct their own usability testing, this is what they are at fault of doing. So when we make a nice product, when we have a nice design, you, want, you think it's the best, you want everyone to agree with you. So the confirmation bias is you're only looking at the information that's gonna prove what you're saying, you're only looking at the information that's gonna make that person say, yep, it's brill, I love it. The issue with that is they may not think that, but you're only seeing that side of it so the way you overcome this is you take a step back, you understand that the, the point of research is to understand the good and the bad. What you're actually trying to look at with research is to understand what's wrong, what's right, see where that niche is. And if you're just looking at the right things, then you're not gonna see the wrong things and you're gonna end up with a bit of a flawed design. Social desirability bias. So naturally, everyone wants to be liked Everyone wants to be a person who goes along with the flow. No one really likes being the person going in the wrong direction. So 
people in this setting will just go along with what the researcher wants or what they think the researcher wants. So if you're looking at something in, in a positive spin, if we take a framing, uh, a question that's framed in the way such as the framing effect, if you're saying something positive, they're going to be like, yeah, I have to say it positive because they love this, so I've got to love this, so they like me. So that's the wrong way to do this. And an issue with this is if you're testing a product with a lot of people, so the interplay with, uh, with one another, if two people say they like it, this third person isn't going to say they don't like it because they want to be liked by the other people. So there's two ways you can combat this. Some people only will do one-to-one -one interviews or usability testing to combat this, so they're only playing off of you. And if you have a, a relatively unflawed design, then they're going to not have these social desirability cues. But you can still run focus groups and not have this effect. What you've got to do is make a conducive environment to make sure that everyone is able to share their thoughts, opinions, and views in a way that they understand that other people aren't going to judge them. The fundamental attribution error. So this is when an individual believes that everything that is wrong comes from themselves. So the issue with this in usability testing is if there is genuinely something wrong with the design, then that person's going to think it's their fault they can't understand it rather than it's the design's fault. So to overcome this, you've got to ensure that the person knows that this is a prototype, this isn't finished. If there is an issue, they don't understand, they need to ca call that out and it's not going to affect that person that you're calling out their design. It more has to do with it's an, it's an error that needs drawing to. It's not necessarily them doing something wrong. It may be a design thing, it may be their thing, but they need to know both. So you need to make sure that your participant or your user understands that before you begin. So the clustering illusion bias is my um, fifth and final type of cognitive bias that I think is important when, user, when conducting usability testing. This is more about the analysis side because humans naturally want to put things in groups. We don't like seeing things as singular. So when you're, at, when you're analyzing data, you want to put everything in a group, but that might not be the point. So if you have a group of 30 and five people say they love your product, you're more likely to go with the positive five people than the however uh, 25 other um, negative people because A, you want a positive one and you're going to find a good cluster if you can find a good cluster. So the way that you overcome this is you analyse with someone else because they're not going to have the same effect as you, they're not going to have the same clustering effect as you, especially if they're removed from the product. So if you know someone that's good at maths and they can figure out that 5 plus 25 is 30 quicker than I could, then they're going to be able to understand your problem and they're going to be able to help and they won't be as needed, as, as, as at fault of, of this effect as, as you possibly are. So if you can remember all of them, maybe you can't now, but... Um, the issue is people don't think these are an issue because they don't understand them as actual effects. They think they're something to be overlooked. People don't understand that the way they say things or the way that everything is conducted may, may have an effect to their actual um, testing session. So the important thing is to keep these at the forefront of your mind when you're creating your initial plan because then you can overcome these and it won't be such a problem. That was very short, so <laughs> thank you for listening to me. And if you have any questions. Any questions? No? Right. Uh, no? Big round of applause for